All right, our topic today is fundamental trigonometry identities. So you can see we're going to be able to prove some, we're going to be able to use them um, to rewrite expressions, to simplify. So some of the um, memorizing that we did previously is definitely going to pay off in this section. Some of our rewriting equations that we've done all through our algebra career is definitely going to um, pay off in being shortcut helpful tools. So let's look at our first set of things we want you to remember, and that is the ratio identities, the reciprocal identities, and the Pythagorean identities. Now, depending upon your background, you may remember them, and then again, you may not. So let's just review. Uh, the tangent theorem was the sine over the cosine. And we do know that um, sine over cosine turns into its inverse, its cotangent, so then the cotangent um, uh, would be cosine over sine. So just using our ideas of uh, reciprocals. Reciprocal identities, these are the other three trig functions than what we normally work with. We know sine's inverse is cosecant. We know secant's inverse is cosine. We know tangent's inverse is cotangent, and vice versa. You can say it in either way. But you got what you need to remember is that we deal with sine to get the inverse. That's one over. So cosecant is really one over sine. Secant is one over cosine and cotangent is 1 over tangent. The Pythagorean identity is one we have memorized, and it looks a lot like Pythagorean theorem, a squared b squared equals c squared, but it's cosine of any angle squared plus the sine of any angle squared has to equal 1. So we could rewrite that, and that's all I did on the second one here, is to rewrite it as what? Solve for the sine. Solve for the sine means move cosine to the other side. So sine of theta squared, sine squared of theta. And then same thing I could do in the third one here, solve it for the cosine. Then after that, we're looking at some of the um, probably two new ones we haven't seen. That's a tangent of theta plus 1 equals the secant squared of theta. So you could also say secant squared of theta um, minus the tangent equals 1. So you could rewrite both of those as well. And then 1 plus the cotangent equals the cosecant. So we can rewrite these like all day. All right. Um, and those were the review from um, sections 13, 1 through 13, 3, if you want to look back in our text. Now, um, how are we going to use those again? The whole idea of we're on a unit circle, maybe. Where are the sines, cosine, tangents, um, and all their inverses? Where are they? Positive, negative, you know on the unit circle, first quadrant, second quadrant, third, fourth. That's one way. We also did the uh, non-unit circle and just said if we rotate through angle theta, we have that radius of our value, the x and y point, um, and you would get more of the distance formula being involved there. And so sine of theta would be y over r, cosine is x over r, tangent is y over x. You can solve with those. You can also solve with the um, trig functions themselves, opposite over hypotenuse, things like that. So these are the pieces you're going to use a lot today to simplify. And then don't forget that when you're in a circle bigger than the unit circle, to find those values on the circle, it's really just the cosine of theta sine of theta times the radius of that circle. So with that information reviewed, you should be able to answer some of the following. So if I say prove the identity that secant of theta equals 1 over cosine of theta, you have to be thinking, oh, I know these. Now, what you want to try to do is get the left side to equal the right, obviously. So what I would highly recommend is one of them stay the same. So at this point, I'm probably going to leave the secant to be the same. So I quickly rewrote 1 over the cosine of theta. Well, I know the cosine of theta is x over r. And some people are saying adjacent, 
over hypotenuse. So then when you switch it around, it's hypotenuse over adjacent. Same sort of thing here. And so you could, you could use that information to help you solve. And so then, that's a tricky step. If r is my radius, then wait a minute, x, x value in a unit circle, on the unit circle, is nothing more than r times the cosine of theta. And once I have it to be r times the cosine of theta, I think you can see the canceling that must happen to get 1 over the cosine of theta. So these are proofs, sort of. You're not writing justification steps, etc. But um, it needs to be clean. It needs to be um, clear what your steps are. Is that the only way to do it? No. But it ha does have to flow from one line to the other. Okay? Next one. Prove the identity of 1 plus the cotangent squared theta and cosecant squared of theta. And so again, you want to try to keep one of those the same. Your choice, I think I like in this case, to keep the cosecant because it's by itself. So I'm thinking 1. 1 is 1. Not going to change that. But we do know the cotangent squared. And if you look back, the tangent was y over x. So the cotangent has to be x over y. Square it and you can see where we're at. All right, so there, then I bet you we're going to have to do a rename, yep, since our denominator was y before, making the 1 really y over y is how we got to, oh, sorry, making it y squared over y squared, because it was really a y squared, not just a y, um, would be what we multiplied by. So then we were had common denominator, and we could add them together. Once we did that, start looking at that numerator, can you rename it? Oh, yeah, of course, because x squared plus y squared has to be r squared. And then we still don't have cosecant quite. So keep going. If you recognize it, r over y is the inverse of y over r. And y over r was? signs. So this has to be the cosecant combination. So that's what we're going to be dealing with. All right, here's another one. I don't think I use x and y's on this one, so write it out. The sine of theta divided by tangent, and it says write it in terms of a single trig function. So I got to write it all in sines, all in cosines, or all in tangents, but all in one. So I start thinking about what do I know about tangent? And I said sine over tangent is really sine of theta over, oh, tangent, yeah, is sine over cosine. So I put that in there. But I never divide with fractions. I multiply by the reciprocal. I do some canceling. And very quickly, we're down to just cosine of theta. Okay? So you will have to manipulate, again, using either your identities, your x over y combinations, so here's your x over r and y combinations of your different trig functions, having those readily available to you. And here's where r equals the square root of. So that's why we got the r and the 1. Or you could use the fundamental trig identities. So all those possibilities, and you're going to do some proofs, like it or not, but you're really not doing proofs because you don't have to justify. So that's what this last section is about. Um, bring any questions you have to class, and we will entertain them.